Hello and welcome to my garage. Today we're going to be taking a look at the gearbox cross member on an MGB. Now this video has come about because we had a message from Bruce Fraser who's in, uh, in Vancouver, British Columbia asking about the gearbox cross member. It just so happens I was sort of halfway through removing the engine and gearbox from my car so it's a good opportunity to take a look at the cross member as we remove it. To start off with I'll get under the car and remove the gearbox cross member so we can take a proper look. So we're under the car here looking at the uh, gearbox cross member and we can see, hopefully you'll be able to see, it's held on to the gearbox with these four with these four bolts underneath there. With the gearbox cross member up in place, they're quite hard to access these. So what I like to do is put a jack on the, uh, on, on the middle of the cross member here, undo the four bolts on either side and let this whole assembly drop down slightly so I can remove these four bolts. You will be able to see so I've disconnected most of the bits from the gearbox already because we're halfway through uh, an engine and a transmission change. So the you'll see the, the clutch slave cylinder is just dangling there. That's that's been removed. We've also taken the exhaust off to give ourselves slightly better access. And at the back here, you'll be able to see hopefully that the uh, the, the prop shaft there has been removed too. I've also I don't know if you'll be able to see or not, but I've put a little elastic band around these uh, around these four bolts. That, that secure the prop shaft to the gearbox. It just stops these moving forward because what I like to do is when I drop the assembly this will just rest on the cross member here and if these bolts are, st are sticking through they will catch on this cross member when we try and remove the gearbox. So to start off with I'm going to put, I'm going to put the pad of the jack in the middle of the gearbox cross member. You don't need to lift anything up, you just want to take Take the weight of the gearbox onto the jack. So there it is. That's that's just touching now. So now what I'm going to do is start undoing these uh, the four bolts at the side. Moving around to the other side, I'll now remove the, these two. There we go. So that's now all four of the nuts removed. With all four of the bolts out, I can now just lower the cross member of the gearbox gently, and what will happen is the gearbox will just come to rest on the uh, on the chassis at the back here. Okay, so that's dropped down now. I'll move the jack out of the way now, just so we've got a better view, and you'll be able to see with the gearbox dropped down, you do have better access to those uh, to those four bolts underneath. So now I'm going to go ahead and get those removed. So hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing here. I'll try not to get in the way of the camera, but all I'll need to do is just, just loosen these, uh, these four bolts off. I think what I would, I'm not going to take them all the way out to start off with until I've got all four of them loose. You can see even with the uh, even with the gearbox dropped down, my access still isn't great, especially with the car on the floor. I imagine if you had a ramp at home, it's going to be a little bit easier for you. But unfortunately, this is this is all I've got. And then moving around, move around to the front of the gearbox, we can see the other. The other bolts we've got to undo here. I think I'm going to be unfortunately in the way when I un when I undo them. So what I'll do, I'll pop the camera down and then and then come back once I've uh, once I start to loosen these off. So 
so I've got I've got both of the front bolts all the way out now so I'm just going to finish off just loosening, loosening these rear ones and then we can drop drop the whole assembly off the car there we go so that's the uh, that's the cross member removed and just to show you on the underside of the gearbox, that's the uh, that's the two holes. The, sorry, the four fittings that we're uh, that we're dealing with. As you can see, I've just got the cross member. As you can see, I've just got the cross member resting on across the uh, across the chassis here. When I remove the gearbox in a moment, what I'll have to do is lift this up, lift this assembly up with a jack, um, so that I, so that it will clear this uh, this part of the chassis. So here's our cross member on the bench. Most likely it would look different to one in your car because this has been drilled out just for racing purposes to make it that little bit lighter. Um, to start with, let's look at the orientation of it. So this is a, a 1971 four synchro cross member. It doesn't have the, uh, the, the support strut coming out of the front, but on any MGB gearbox cross member, you should always have this, uh, this little dimple, this little, little cutout part, that should always be on the front face. Moving around to this sort of butterfly or wing section, you'll notice that it has a, a sort of a flat edge on that side and then a scoop, a scallop out of the back on the other. It always has that flat front going towards the front of the car. Okay, so here is our cross member broken down into its component parts. You'll see on this cross member, that's, again, that's the front edge there with the, with the cutout. What I've done, I've slotted these two, these two holes here. This is what the, uh, the, the sort of the the mountings go into and having those holes slotted does make it easier to fit back on. When, once the gearbox is out of the car I'll, I'll cover that in a bit more detail. Also notice which holes I've used for a for a four synchro non-overdrive gearbox you use these front holes for the uh, for the mounts and then for, for an overdrive gearbox you use the rear hole there. Again looking at this sort of butterfly part you can see you've also got two orientations for this uh, for, for this plate at the bottom I've marked mine up with an arrow. On mine, it's the, I use the, th the thicker edge points towards the front of the car. When you assemble that, usually you can sort of tell if it feels the wrong way round or not. Once that's once that's put into position, let me turn it around the wrong way first and see see if we, we can see the difference. So if that was going into there, if that was going into there with the holes at the bottom, let me just line that up. We would notice that it's a long way off on the uh, on the mount there. So that is. It's sort of fairly obvious, but I don't think there's any harm in just marking, marking all these parts up, so that when you put them back into the back into the car, you know which way they go. So I've got an orientation arrow there, and one on the bottom there. I also marked a little dot to show the front, but that part is more obvious. Just to very briefly cover the disassembly of this of this butterfly part, we have a sort of a, a pin that goes all the way through with this sort of big round head on the front of it. So let's get that the round part into the vise, just pinch that up. And then we just got a half head nut on the end here, so let's see if that will come undone. Yep. So then we can take take that nut all the way off. You've got I think a spring a flat and then a, and then a large flat washer and then this should separate separate out leaving just just that pin part behind now you'll be able to see here this is a symptom of unfortunately modern low quality rubber this has got very sort of very squashy the rubber here it should be quite a nice firm firm bush in there i've actually got an old rubber bush here from a probably, probably an orig original bush in, in, in this uh, in this old uh, this old butterfly part what I might try and do is to remove this rubber see if I can get it out of there cleanly and I might I might put that into the into the bracket that's on my car so again let's just remove this nut from the end if I can it's a bit more rusty than the one I take the tape off my car I think that's going to come that separated we can see you can sort of see the difference between the two bushes there I think this is this is the new one and then this is the uh, the old stock one. I think when I feel them that's definitely a lot a lot softer than this you know that really has sort of started to perish but this looks pretty good so let's see if we can get this out so I'm just going to spray it with a little bit of WD-40 I'm hoping I'm 
hoping something like this plastic trim tool will be enough to sort of push it back through and not damage it at all. But let's see, let's see what happens. Okay, so we've got that out, we've got that out fairly cleanly. I'll do the same now with the one on the other side. You will see you've got a one one side is definitely thicker than the other. Um, so I always try and push out the, the small side. I guess I'm gonna be right in the way unfortunately, aren't I? So I'll try and do it. I'll try and do it from this way instead if I can. There we go, so that's that's got those two out. And I'm gonna say they do look in very nice condition certainly compared to you know the, the sort of new ones that have been on that car probably less than less than 12 months I think so now we'll, we'll swap these around so let's uh, let's start off by removing moving this one I don't think I'm going to and that's probably just going to push out it does feel very soft there we go and you can hope I don't know if you'll be able to see or not but that all has sort of started to start to split around the bottom it might not show up very well in the video so let's again a little bit of WD-40 so let's try and pop pop him back in again I'm sorry if I went right in the way of the camera I imagine So that's uh, that's that one back in, and now we'll do the same with the uh, with, with the sort of the wing part. Just b before going ahead with this, I'll just show you the orientation of the uh, of the of the rubber bushes. What you should have is the two the two thinner ones, two slightly smaller rings are in the middle, then the two thicker ones are on the outsides. So let's pop let's pop this wing piece into the vise. I mean, I, I suppose as I'm not probably not going to be reusing these, I could always just cut the old ones off, but they they felt like they were going to they felt like they were, they were going to come out fairly easily. So let me see if we can do that just in case we need them for an emergency later. There we go. So this one I think is is the worst one. I think you can see yes around there. You see that's all started. You can see that's all started to split away. So same procedure again. We've got our older one here that's in far better shape. Um, we need to go through that way. So again, just a little bit of WD-40 on there. You can probably use sort of fairy liquid, screen wash, anything just to, just to sort of lubricate the rubber slightly. That gives that a little bit of a clean up. See if we can pop that back through. Apologies again if I'm in the way. It definitely gives you your finger workout for the day getting these in. There we go. So that's the uh, that's the pairing. Just using this plastic tool rather than the screwdriver just means we're not going to damage not going to damage that rubber at all so the reassembly is almost well it is the complete opposite of the disassembly so we'll put our put our sort of pin through there the wing plate is the, is the first one to go on hopefully we're going to have enough 
having to move that side. I haven't got myself wide enough room. So there we go. That's the that's the wing plate on. And then we've got the underneath one. And then we've got the the large nut. I don't know if you'll be able to see, but if you look at the end of this thread, you'll see it has a definite stop. So that that washer only goes down, only goes down so far. So we've got that spring washer, and then our, I think it's a 5 16th nut just to finish off. And then we'll give this a little bit of a pinch up. I think that should be plenty. I'm going to carry on now and get the gearbox out of the car. We'll then be able to fit the cross member up to it on the, on the bench here and give you a bit of an idea as to, as to what's going on. While I'm under the car, it does give me an opportunity to point out one of the discrepancies I have with this vehicle. The, uh, the gearbox cross member is for a four synchro. The, the shell is a four synchro shell, but it has a narrow tunnel fitted. And you can see that the, uh, it, it runs very close to the body just there. I think with a normal four synchro tunnel, it would be more like the clearance you have on the other side there. The second thing I'd like to point out is what can happen when you don't sort of secure those, those little four bolts at the back of the gearbox when you put it back in. So this is where those bolts have caught and just sort of, and just damage the, uh, damage the rail there slightly. Nothing made, but just, just so to, to avoid if we can. Just here you'll be able to see the, uh, the mounting holes that I use in the, in the chassis rail. The front of the car is, is, is that way. And I use the, the, the back two of the, uh, of the holes for, for the cross member. I'm not quite sure which, which gearbox use it, uses the front holes. Okay, so here is our gearbox out of the car and onto the bench. You'll be able to see um, the rubber band I spoke about when I was under the car just to hold, those, uh, hold those, these four bolts in place. These are the gearbox mounting plates, mounting parts here. So you've got these two two pieces here where you're where the uh, where the mounts will go on to and I've just just to support I've just put two bits of wood under the gearbox now that's just to stop that sort of the input shaft underneath rubbing on the table or also toppling toppling over so now let's have a look at these uh, these mounts so you probably remember we spoke a bit earlier on about these slotted these slotted holes in uh, in my gearbox cross member, ignore that drill hole there. That was that was a mistake I made when I when I cut that cut that the wrong wrong size. So, and the idea of the slotted hole is to allow us to put put these mounts onto the gearbox first, and then put the cross member up to them without having to do these four these four nuts up under the car. Sorry, the four bolts up under the car. In the so in my previous videos, I've I found it not too bad if the if the gearbox is sort of hanging down to get those to get those four bolts in. But we'll give this method a try and see uh, and see what happens. I'm going to run through this assembly, showing the advantage of the slotted the slotted holes in a cross member. So I think we'd have to assume the gearbox is back in the car. Um, this is the first part to go. I mean, in theory, you could you could put this in the mounts on and, and drop the gearbox back in. You just got to be careful not to not to sort of catch this on the car as, you, as, you, as you're putting it back in. So let me just try and get a get a few of these nuts just, a few of these bolts just started. I know obviously this way it's, it's, it's far easier than under the car because you know, we've, got, we've got nothing in our way. Under the car you've got the sort of a, the, the gearbox tunnel all around you here. So the, as you can see in the, the sort of the first video, the space is, is very tight indeed, unfortunately. And all these parts do have a habit of sort of moving moving on their own accord as, you, as you're trying to put them back in so let's let's just ask you know, just for an example let's just put this in on the bench and see uh, and see how it looks let's check our orientation so we've got the the flat edge at the front there we've got the arrow pointing down obviously the front of the car it will be will be on the on the bench there in that direction so even now it's quite hard to get these uh, get these bolts started. They have they're behaving fairly well though. So let me just get that last one in. It's often that when you're under the car, it's the last one that's the hardest to do. So I'd, I only ever do these finger finger tight to begin with. And you, it's, a, it's a case of just trying to get on these with a spanner. Using this method, we do have the advantages that we can use a socket under the car. So let me just. It's really loose on these. I, I just sort of the end, end of the socket is enough. You, you're sort of, it's a coarse, coarse thread going into aluminium, so you really don't need to don't need to pinch it up 
that hard. It's very easy also to, uh, to strip the threads in these. I think this that mount's a little bit poor, so I might uh, I might replace this mount before uh, before we go back into the car at a future date. So there we are. So that's that's the engine mounts, so the gearbox mounts on, and then we've got our butterfly plate in place. Having these slotted holes allows you to put this put this in place like like so. Now, obviously, with the uh, with, with with a standard cross member, you're not going to be able to access these uh, these nuts here. Uh, to put to put them on, so you have to drill a hole, sort of where the rack, where the, where the socket would go in, in order to access that. I'll try and find some details on on some dimensions of where to put it. On my gearbox, it's, it's no problem at all, because obviously there's, there's there's lots of holes, and so it's quite easy to get to get the nuts started on there. So let me just pull that in. I'll do the same on the other side, and then this would then allow us. You could use the Sort of under the under the car, you could probably get your hand in there just to guide, to guide this, and just just to get these uh, just get these bolts just sort of started is all you need to do. So just get it one in like that, and then one in on the other side. Again, with with the holes in my gearbox cross member, it's it's far easier than 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 without. And as you can see, even even with absolutely nothing in the way it's not the easiest job to get these to start and this can be the drawback with this method but let me see if i can just get that yeah, so that has that has got going now so what i would do i will probably do these the ones on the on the mounts first of all so if you have your hole so you can access through with the through with the long socket same on the other side and all we need to do is just finish finish off with these uh, with these two here so that would be the assembly using the slotted slotted type cross member and now I'll show you how I'd assemble it with, with the non-slotted cross member. So this would be, imagine we're under the car, the gearbox is sort of hanging down slightly, and I've got the I've got the cross member here fully assembled. I've loosened these two these two lower bolts a little bit, and what I would generally try and do is get the easier ones, which are the, is the rear the rear bolt started first. So under the vehicle, it's usually just a case of trying to visually line it up as best you can, and hopefully finding finding one nut sorry one of the one of the holes to get one nuts one bolt started so again I wouldn't do it too tight just sort of finger tight for now and that's and I appreciate it. it's much easier to do do on the bench here when I when I can see the holes and everything is you know it's far easier to maneuver my hands around I then get the uh, the second rear nut in, rear bolt in place I hope you'll be able to, to get, a, get an idea as to as to what I'm doing. So once the two rears were sort of in and start, so I'll move around to the front. So I'm going to move the camera a little bit so you can see. Unfortunately, it seems almost impossible for me to get a get an angle that you'll be able to see what I'm doing and then not get in the way. But so I'll try and do that that front bolt next. I think I think my hand is going to be right in the way of the camera. I can't easily do it another way. So you, can, you, you, with this lower part loose, you will be able to just get that to move up slightly. And I can feel that has started. And then I do the same again. This is the easier side around here. Let me move the camera just a little bit for you. So that's yes, there you, there you can hopefully see it. Now this is probably the easier side. So again, I'll just get on there with my with my fingers and pinch them up. And then just to finish up, just a spanner, so we can't use a socket here under the car because there's absolutely no room at all. And then just, just pinch them up.
And with all with all four of these uh, of these bolts started, it's just a case now of go, going round and then tightening them all up. The front ones are harder to access, so sometimes a small a small span run under the car would help. I would definitely try and do it as much as you can with your fingers first, and then just pinch just pinch these all up at the end. So all that remains now is just to tighten up these uh, these two bolts at the bottom, and then and then that's that's the uh, the, the job done using the, the sort of the more conventional method I should say if your cross member isn't slotted. There we are, so in, in terms of methods it's all sort of all up to you depending which which one you prefer obviously with, with the slotted method there are some benefits that you can assemble a lot of this sort of a, a, a bit easier you can do it off the car before putting it back in if you've got the clearance to get it to get it in then the more conventional method possibly Possibly the one I use the more regularly actually is, 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 the, is the conventional method with, this, with just the gearbox dropping down when I, when I put it back in. It does mean I've only got four, four bolts to do it rather than have to take this all apart to, uh, to, do, to do the slotted method. I appreciate that having it on the, on the bench here is an awful lot easier than doing it under the car there but I think trying to film under there would have been very difficult indeed. It was hard enough trying to show you on the bench here. So I think with this, with this video, any questions please don't hesitate to get in touch and I'll try and help a bit more if I can. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Many thanks, bye.